everybody. Welcome to my channel. This is Courtney. Today, I wanted to do something different that I haven't done on my channel before. While I'm doing my errands around the house and especially my nails because they really need it, I am going to read a series of six short stories. And after each of them, I will come on and talk about the book and give you my thoughts. It's a series of short stories all by best-selling authors. And it talks about wild animal instincts, human folly, and survival. I originally chose this these stories because all the illustrations on the front of the books just had just pretty wild, vibrant colors, looks like foliage in nature, as well as animals with tiger claws and things like that. So it looks like a bunch of fun. So, so the first book is called The Tiger Came to the Mountains by Silvia Moreno Garcia. It's about a 13 year old girl during the time of the Mexican Revolution. Her father and the other men in the village have gone off to fight for Pancho Villa and have only left the remaining children and the women in the village. And she speaks of all the struggles of trying to survive on a daily basis, about how soldiers come into the town and scavenge and assault the people there. She talks about the polones, which are like bandits that come and threaten the remaining people in the village. She talks about just how you survive and the people that are left behind while war is going on. During this time, she is very close with her younger brother and she describes him as young, gentle, and often fragile. He's sick a lot of the time, so she really feels close to him. So at one point, they, her and her brother flee to the mountains because there's a threat that the soldiers are going to come and her brother is sick and she's really worried about him. And then somehow there's this tiger that gets into this cave and she feels that she has to protect him. So I do like the fact that this book is written in first person. You get to see the struggle firsthand. I know it's not easy on the ground during wartime left behind. I think it's almost easier for soldiers who have their purpose and are going out and fight. However, when you are left behind to pick up the pieces of life to make sure that when soldiers come back, there is still something to come back to. And as a child, when, you know, you have all the freedoms in the world that you want to explore and having to worry about soldiers coming in, doing ungodly things to the women and to the children and knowing what it's like to have hunger when you used to have food you know, in your belly each and every night, seeing your home destroyed, things taken away, animals being taken away. I think that a child loses their innocence in all of that. There was one quote in the book that really stuck with me. It said, some men end up on coins and bills after war, but that does not make them saints. And that is very thought provoking because there are a lot of things that happen during wartime that are definitely not the most pleasant for anyone, especially a child to witness. I think this book had a very nostalgic effect for me, almost like relaying some beloved story from your childhood. And it's about a young girl talking about her brother and you can just feel that she really cares about him. And even the way that she described the tiger as being beautiful and being impressive and unique, I almost feel like that's what she thought of her brother. Something that stood out for me that I didn't even notice truthfully until the end is that the narrator is never giving a name. So I think the book is or the story is more about her brother and the tiger and not about her. So she's still telling this story, but she's also kind of distancing herself from it so that that focus is not on her. And that's very unique. I also enjoyed how she incorporated Mexican folklore into the story and also Mexican names like you have the Polones, you have the Noales. You know, those are things that, you know, I'm not Mexican, so I don't know about. But it was interesting to be able to see that culture brought into this story. And it makes you want to know a little bit more about it. 
Overall, I felt this was a great story, especially with what's going on today with Ukraine. I felt it more than I would have maybe at any other times. So I will go to the next book. Okay, I'm back. I, <laughs> everything keeps getting in the way. Okay, I'm finally gonna take off this red fingernail polish and start the whole nail situation going on. Okay, so the book that I just finished is called Wildlife by Jeff Vandermeer. Now this book is about Sam. She's a female. She's recently divorced and she is hiding out in her dead father's house. Now her father's house backs up into a ravine and the green belt area. Just, you know, a lot of forest and, you know, you can't build any homes on it. And um, she has this next door neighbor who cuts down this beautiful pine tree and fells it into her yard. And then she finds that he is cutting all this, you know, vegetation around his property. And when she talks to him, he threatens her to say, stay on your property and make sure you keep your lights on at night. She enjoys the nature. She enjoys the trees. She's wondering, why should I keep my lights on at night? Why are you threatening me? And she's very upset. So then she thinks, okay, he must be hiding something. And she starts to investigate and find out what exactly this is. So that's the book. Now, I like how this story unfolds. It's gradual to tell the secret. So I think that that's you know, it, it builds that suspense for you. I think the book deals a lot with grief, um, conservation, of course, with trees and with animals. It talks about protecting nature, finding some peace in your own life and how nature can help heal you. It talks about betrayal, talks about standing your own ground and about overstepping boundaries. Like people don't do that, right? One thing I did like is that she had a neighbor. Her neighbor was Geraldine and she was in healthcare. And I like a statement that she said, I'm going to read it. It says, I like helping people until I didn't like helping people. I put in my time, did what I could, and then I retired early. I think that is what we all want to do in life, okay? I don't want to work forever. I thought that the ending was very questionable and I think it's definitely open up for interpretation. I thought about it for a while and then I just, you know, I, I had to let it go. But I'm going to pose that question to you. If you read this series, please tell me what you think of the ending. And lastly, the thing I want to say about wildlife is that the, the chapter's count it down. So I think you started at like 15 or 16 or something like that. And then it counted down all the way to one. I'm pretty sure that has some sort of significance there. Okay, everybody, I'm back. Finally got all of this fingernail polish off. I won't tell you how many layers of fingernail polish I had on there. You know, when you don't have a lot of time, you just keep layering just so it looks good from a distance. But I got all the fingernail polish off. So, and I, um, here's some instructions. Here's the different powders. You can choose any one that you want. Here's a little tray so you don't create so much of a mess. And then you have all these different things. I'll show you, but here's the colors. And then I have my handy dandy uh, manicure kit. Really like that one. Of course, I have a file. And then I, I have that. a brush. So I have a pink. And then, well, it's called Evening Sand. And then this one's called Pink Nectar. Now, this is a book review, not necessarily a nail tutorial, so I'm not going to film all of this. However, the gist of this is you are going to put on a layer of your base coat. Take your little powder here. You're going to put your finger into hair there, dip it, tap it off, get the excess right here, do the same thing again, base coat, dip your nail in there, tap it off in. Once it dries, then you put on the activator, let that dry, and then you do a top coat. Nails. So anyway, so this book right here is called Bloody Summer by Carmen Maria Machado. 
The story follows a researcher that is looking into the origins of one of those children's hand clap games, like Mary's Mac, 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 you know, those type of things. And it's called uh, This Tiger, That Tiger, or Tiger, Tiger, or Burning Season, whatever. Never heard of that. Anyway, uh, so it leads the narrator to a town called Never Again, which is in Pennsylvania, a little small type coal mining slash chicken farmer type community in um, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania. And she writes about all these tiger sightings that have been heard about since the 1800s, which were all dismissed due to, you know, drunken fodder, visions, and delirium. So just one of those things that follow you throughout, you know, the centuries. Then she learns about the zoological park that existed there in the 1960s and how there was these killings that happened via the tigers in the 1990s. And then after publishing her paper, she stumbles upon this unexpected and alleged firsthand account of someone that said that they were there. And she starts to learn about what happened and that connection with the children, the town, and how this tiger got incorporated into these children's folklore songs. Now, this book is written in, oh my gosh, I just realized this fan was on. I hope it hasn't been affecting my sound. Okay, this book is written in a sort of documentary essay style with a bunch of references that allow you to feel like this is a true story. I actually looked it up to see if it was real because I was curious about that. And it's not. And although this is fiction, I think that there is definitely a lot of accuracies. So There's actually a Lackawanna County in Pennsylvania. I also thought how she talks about the history of tiger sightings and how tigers came to be in the U U.S. is very interesting. She talks about the first known tiger species in the U.S.A. is by P.T. Barnum, which of course is affiliated with the circus. And then she talks about how, you know, they were at zoo parks and you have so many people that are collectors, which is definitely dangerous. She says that there's more tigers in captivity in the United States than there are in the wild. So that that's something to think about for sure. This book gave me Tiger King vibes. <laughs> you have um, Joe Exotic, um, the small town where, you know, you have the zoological park. I think the author did a great job of comparing tigers to children about the beauty, their wildness, and the desire to be free. She actually had a very interesting quote. It said, for what is a child but a raged tiger, something that should never have been trapped in the first place. And I can see that children are just crazy and wild and doing their own things. And it's not until we become adults that we kind of tame ourselves. And that is the nature of a child. So I definitely can understand that comparison. Okay, everybody, I have finished one hand. I don't know if you can see it. It's pretty. I like these two better than these. I just did an overlay on my natural nails and I probably only plan to keep these for maybe one week. So I'm not worried about filing down and making sure they're smooth and getting all the edges right and all that stuff. This is only my second time ever doing dip nails. And so I'm not, I'm not a pro by any means. I just like to do beauty stuff. And most of the time it comes out crazy, but you know, I, I try because I'm definitely not going to pay somebody to do it for me. So the next book is called Righteous Man by Tochi Oyabuchi. I hope I'm saying that correctly. So it's about Nathaniel who is an English missionary in West Africa and the story unfolds through a series of letters that he's writing to his wife Teresa and he starts out being this wide-eyed dreamy missionary but he's very realistic about the barriers that he's going to encounter with some of the natives and about his ability to you know make an impact on them and educate the natives in this small village. And he starts to develop a friendship with this native boy, Solomon, who serves as a translator. And he feels like he's making a lot of really great strides with them. 
So while he's in this village, he starts to see evidence of the slave trade. He is horrified by what he sees. He's heartbroken, he's distraught, and he believes that it's a great sin, but he doesn't feel like he really can make a difference when it comes to that. So he just preys on it. Shortly after he gets sick and then he starts to question God's presence and his faith. I thought this book was really interesting in how it is told through letters to his wife. I've never seen a book completely told through letters, correspondence like that. So I, I, I really enjoyed that. And I think that it did a really good job in unfolding and showing what was actually going on. I felt like through the letters, of Nathaniel to Teresa, you felt their true friendship and their love story. And I thought that was very beautiful. You don't see that a lot these days. It's not like somebody's sending love, love texts and love emails all the time. I appreciated how realistic initially Nathaniel was coming into the village. He realized that these people, these villagers had lives that were completely different being in a primitive type environment compared to where he comes from. He said, how can you understand the greatness and benevolence of God if your crops have failed and your child has perished from sickness? So I thought that was very mature of him to be able to understand that up front. I did feel that he wasn't that humble initially. I think he struggled with being humble. Even at one point he said, my hands are incapable of miracles, so my words are all that I have left. So I, I think that that's him saying, hey, look, my words are what's going to get these people across to understand what I'm trying to say. But I also felt that he wanted to be able to have these people idolize him as well, being this great speaker and this guy coming in, you know, teaching them how to be these perfect Christians. When it comes to missionary work, I believe in positiveness and life over in general. I just feel like that is not the same for everyone. And I'm not one to force my beliefs on other people. Okay, YouTube, I am all done with my nails hard to see them I think with this light color but I think they came out really really nice really glossy you don't normally see that initially with the with the powders but <laughs> the next book is called stag by Karen Russell it's a dark psychological type comedy about Stan who is a divorcee attending a divorce party. He's a plus one, so he doesn't really know anybody. He barely even knows the person that actually invited him. And while he's there, he he's meets Greeley. Greeley is this tortoise. I always say tortoise. And I get I get laughed at all the time. But it's this tortoise um who is actually the ring bearer. And while everyone is out partying, having a good time and getting drunk, he obsesses over this tortoise and starts to examine his life, his faith and all of the existence and all. So it it's it's not too much actually happens in the book is just more of his thoughts. So my first impression of this book is that I thought it was gonna be a really lighthearted read and fun and then it turned serious, which threw me off a bit, but it was still a good book. Another thing that I thought was interesting is that your family and your friends come together to celebrate your union, your marriage. And they're involved in that. I mean, they're not the primary people in a relationship, but they are involved. I'm here for that. I would attend a divorce party. I think it'd be fun. I think Stan is a very observant human being. He is constantly in the book comparing humans to animals. Even at the beginning of the book, I, I actually had to go back and read because I thought we were talking about animals and in, in the wild being compared to humans when it was kind of really the other way around. But he's a very observant person and there's a lot of analogies of humans to nature in the book. I think that Greeley the tortoise is still so, so funny. I think it's interesting that he is at this divorce party 
of this couple that vowed to live together in holy matrimony for the rest of their lives forever for them. And yet they didn't last very long. Yet this tortoise who lives a very long life is there with his slow crawl. I thought that symbolism was very interesting and unique. Okay, so the last book in this short story collection is called The Backbone of the World by Stephen Graham Jones. Now, this book is a suspenseful horror story that follows Millie, who is a Native American in Montana living on a trailer in the Blackfoot Nation. Her husband has been sent to prison and she is being ostracized in the community because of that. And she will soon lose her land, unfortunately. And she starts to notice that all these prairie dogs, which are common for the area, however, they seem like they're multiplying in numbers and are slowly invading her land and coming towards her trailer area. And so she starts to go to war with them. And Millie takes in a boarder, a tenant on the trailer on her land and finds that this tenant has some secrets and she wants to figure what those are. Now, this book more than any of the others is hard for me not to do a spoiler on. So I'm going to leave this review kind of vague. However, I do think that the ending to me was... I don't know. It was just confusing. It was, it was dark. It was a bit creepy for me. I kind of had some chills towards the end, but I, I was a bit confused about exactly what was happening. I don't know if it was maybe lost in the cultures since I'm not Native American, but if anybody wants to send me some comments below so we can talk about this, I would really greatly appreciate it and like that feedback. I think Millie is a very tough resilient woman that probably doesn't show emotion a lot and I feel like she's lonely and you know not everybody shows their internal struggles to the outside world so I really wanted to just give her a hug I felt for her a lot I think the book shows how she respects the land and the animals and her family. Another thing that stuck with me is the culture that exists in the Native American community. Millie and the tenant are speaking of a particular story and Millie notices that it's the same story that she herself knows about. It's just a variation. And you know how a story gets transformed as people tell it, you know, down the line. And so I think that it's lovely that history prevails. I think too many times in certain communities that the history gets lost. Overall, I enjoyed the Trespass collection. It definitely was more serious than I expected it to be <laughs> with the bright colors on the front of the books. I expected something more lighthearted. However, it got me to thinking about a lot of different subjects and I do appreciate that. I think, you know, <laughs> expanding your brain power does not hurt, especially with cultural awareness as well as nature. I, I really think that that's important and I think is worth checking out and I endorse it. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.